everyone, my name is Brandy. I am with Brush by Brandy, and this week we're going to be working on this little piece behind me. Um, so this week I'm using the Field of Flowers transfer from Dixie Belle. That's the design that you see on this piece. And I'm going to show you how I paint it in around this to make it perfectly fit the size of this little chest here. Um, so I think this is a really custom look, and it's really adorable too. Um, so I'm going to give you a list of colors that you would need if you want to paint in around this transfer. All of the colors that I used on this is Dixie Belle the Gulf, which is the blue. Um, I've got Fluff, which is my white that I used to blend in the edges here. Holy guacamole was essential in this one, and that's all the yellow in the clouds and even some of the yellow in the field of flowers. Um, collard greens, which is my darker green in the field of flowers. And then if you want to match the actual flowers themselves, I found that Rusty Nail is the closest, but a little bit of Barn Red also. So that is my color list for everything that's in this transfer. If you want to paint it in to match like we're going to do this week on this piece. So I think it came out really high end, really cute. The size of this transfer works great if you're working with a blanket box or a cedar chest or anything like that. Um, and I think it gave this this chest a really one of a kind look. So let's go ahead and get started and I'm gonna show you how we got this finish on this piece. You guys should know by now, I always start my pieces by taking the hardware off and setting them in a dish to be cleaned. Next up is to always clean my piece with Dixie Belle White Lightning Cleaner. I could look at this piece and by the age and the color of the wood tell that this is gonna be a bleeder, but in case you aren't sure, your rag can also be a good indicator. This one wiped pretty dirty. That's not dirt, that's actually the tannins bleeding through from my wood. After I rinse my cleaning residue really well with water, I wanna make sure that I come back and give my piece two coats of Dixie Belle Boss in gray. Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer that's gonna keep those wood tannins from seeping through into my finishes. I chose Boss in gray because I love the coverage that it gives and I'm just rolling it on using a flocked roller. I make sure and let my boss dry 24 hours in between each coat and I'm gonna go ahead and apply two coats before I start my finishes. This flocked roller makes really quick work of getting these coats on. All right, with my boss nice and dry, I'm ready to go ahead and start laying on my finishes. We are going to get a super pretty hand-painted floral look on this little chest here. We're gonna do it using this. This is the Field of Flowers transfer from Dixie Belle. And let me show you what it actually looks like in print. So we're going to use these sheets here and apply them to this chest to give it this floral feeling. And I'm wrapping it all around the sides. So it runs um, in a line all around the sides. Um, and then I'm going to show you how we can paint in this transfer for any areas that it doesn't fit. Because painting in a transfer is an amazing tool to use to get these to work on any size. But I see this size transfer working really well on like blanket boxes or cedar chests um, or small little dressers like this one. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I wanna do is you'll notice that on this transfer, all of the pieces are numbered, okay? So you can lay this out um, in kind of an order so you get a feel for what piece should go where. Um, and that's an important thing to do so you know what pieces to cut and how you're gonna cut them. Once I've got my pieces laid out, I want to trim anywhere there's gonna be a seam. And so I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors and let me show you what I'm trimming. Can you see that clear line that runs all the way around the outer edge? I wanna trim that off because if those are overlapping, it makes the seams really visible. So let's go ahead and trim that. I'm just gonna run a pair of scissors as close to the line as I can without cutting the print without cutting the actual color off my transfer. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim these up and then I'll come back and we'll go ahead and, with the next step. All right, I've cut all four of my sheets and this is what it ends up looking like. I cut two sides on each sheet, which um, since there's four pieces, they all meet up in the center. So I wanna cut two sides. That's where all my seams are gonna be. And now I'm gonna go ahead and dry fit my transfer pieces onto the front of my piece to see where they're gonna sit. So I know that I wanna start with this floral portion. I want the bottom portion of the florals to run flush with the bottom of my piece. And so that's roughly how I'm gonna lay my um, pattern out. And then I will cut this top portion because it's gonna to be too long. So I'm gonna lay these out. We'll come back and get them put on. Okay, so this is about where my pieces are gonna lie. And I hung this a little bit further down past the actual bottom of my piece. 
And that's because I'm gonna ask it to wrap some curves. And where it goes over a curve, it's actually gonna take more of the transfer than a flat surface would. So I wanna leave a little bit of extra space for that curve. The other thing to pay attention to is on this transfer, the sizes of the sheets are not exactly the same on both. So my seam is a little bit off center and that's because this sheet is a little bit different size than this one. So just keep that in mind when you're laying this out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this one down, still keeping in mind where that one's gonna go and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this backing sheet and we're gonna start laying this transfer. So I'm going to start on the bottom of my piece. Once I remove this backing, this is fully adhesive. So you want to be very mindful of where you set this and what you let it stick to. And I'm going to find my placement on this. And I'm going to start attaching this to the bottom of this piece first. And I'm going to run my way up. So right about there. Now the nice thing about this application is I know that I'm gonna have extra of this transfer because this blue is um, very tall, I won't need it all. So if I need to, I can cut this and make it any shape that I want and I'll still have plenty of transfer for this application. I'm gonna go ahead and rub this into this bottom molding just so my transfer starts attaching. And I'm just gonna work one section at a time. So now I've got the bottom molding, I know that I need to make a cut here. And this piece is going to attach just to the drawer. I'm just using a razor knife and I'm gonna cut right into that drawer molding. Okay, and then that's going to come up and sit right onto the drawer itself. And then I can keep this into place because that's where that piece is gonna go. I'm just gonna use the tool that comes with the transfer and I'm just going to activate that adhesive so that it sticks to my furniture piece. Okay, and now I can go ahead and apply this one and I'll come back and work one section at a time. So let's come down here so you can see this molding actually getting applied. All right, so this is where my cut is and now I'm gonna go ahead and rub this on and I'm gonna wrap this molding one crevice at a time. I just press it into the crevice I'm gonna come and wrap this bottom so that the little edge wraps underneath my piece. You don't, you won't even see that edge. And now there's a little bit of a curve here and I'm gonna wrap it into the top of this curve. And that's, there's a little bit of fluting on this molding, so I'm gonna press it into that fluting next. Um, I could take this drawer out that's just above it. That would help with this application too, since I'm just doing this molding piece right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it on the top, and then I'll be able to start removing this clear backing. Now I'm going to take my clear backing sheet and I'm gonna start pulling it back and rubbing at the same time. All right, and so I've got a really nice application here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut my transfer in some of these seams. I'm just gonna score it a little bit, just a light run with my razor knife. And this just helps my transfer find where I want it to take all those curves. Rather than tearing anywhere, the razor knife controls, very, just a very light run with my razor knife is gonna control where I want that transfer to sit. And now as I press it into these details with my fingers, it's not gonna wanna tear. Anywhere except for where I've scored it with that razor knife. All right, that is gorgeous, you guys, that is beautiful. Now you can see I've got a little space on the edge here. That's part of where we're going to paint this transfer in and you will never know that it was not exactly the right size for this furniture piece. I'm gonna rub this on and I know that my next cut is gonna be right here at where my drawer stops. I'm gonna make a cut in that. Now 
I'm just running my razor knife right along the edge of that molding. Whoops. All right, and I've got a nice straight cut there. And I can go ahead and push this up and now I can start attaching this piece permanently. I'm applying my transfer right over the top of my Dixie Belle Boss. Boss is a perfect base. It gave me a solid color. I can choose if I want to paint underneath, but in this case, I think that Boss is a great color. It makes a great base. I don't need to paint underneath this transfer. It is semi-translucent, so it just gives me a solid color base underneath, which is all I would need a paint color for. All right, and once I feel like I've got an edge pretty, try to get underneath this clear backing. I'm gonna get my finger under there and I can start pulling this back. Make sure you've got a good corner and then you can start pulling away the backing sheet. Just rubbing as I go watching the areas that I'm pulling up to make sure that my transfer isn't pulling up with it. If my transfer does want to pull up with the backing sheet, I just lay it back down, make sure I rub that section. It's just a little section that might need a little extra rubbing. All right, I'm gonna get this top corner. The corners you wanna be especially aware of. But once you've got your corners down, the rest will come away pretty easily. Beautiful application. And then I'm gonna rub over this with my fingers. And I can hear any areas where there might've been an air bubble because this is a large sheet of a transfer. If you've got, I've got a little air pocket right here. I'm just gonna take my razor knife and I'm gonna pop a little pinhole. And then I can press the air out of that pinhole. There's another one. And that transfer is not gonna to wanna to tear on those spots. Here I've got a little keyhole and I'm gonna put that back on. So I'm just gonna cut my little keyhole out, just like that. All right, I'm just listening for any air pockets and I hear one popping. All right, but that was able to be rubbed out. You only need it to cut a little hole for the ones that you can't rub out. And it's just a little pinhole. You'll never even see it. It's just enough to let the air out. All right, that is beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then we'll come work on the top.
Let's talk about the top on this piece. Obviously my transfer is not large enough to fully wrap the top piece of this. So what I ended up doing is coming back and painting it in with my Dixie Belle paint to match the body of the piece. What that means with this transfer is I'm gonna take the sky scene that's at the very top and I'm gonna wrap it onto the top of my piece itself. The first thing I did is I analyzed the sky scene in this, in this transfer and the colors that I saw in it were Dixie Belle the Gulf, which is the blue in the background. And then I saw fluff, which is white in the clouds and then a little bit of holy guacamole, which is gonna be that deep rich kind of gold color that you see in the clouds. I then really looked at my transfer for how close together the clouds were, what the sort of pattern was, and they're pretty close together. They're quite concentrated against the blue background. And so I came up to the top of my piece and I just laid on sort of randomly patches of the holy guacamole with a little bit of the fluff on top and then a little bit of the gulf in the background. And I'm just patching them in. Once I had a basic layout for those colors, I came back with my Dixie Belle Besting brush and I just used a little bit of water to keep my paint wet and I swirled those colors together. That swirling motion gives it this nice, really soft, hazy effect that looks just like the clouds in the transfer. Anywhere that I felt like I needed to add more color, I just came back with my paint color and re-swirled it in. One thing I look for in transfers is how easy they are to paint in so that I can put them on any size piece that I want and make the background match like it's a seamless pattern. Okay, so for the last part of painting this in, I'm gonna go ahead and extend this little white haze that you see on the edge of this transfer. I think it's really pretty. Um, I'm gonna extend it to the part that I painted in. So I'm gonna use Dixie Belle Fluff, which is a nice white. And I've got my color match here and then up here, which this is the Gulf and, and Holy Guacamole, and then some collard greens and Holy Guacamole down here. I'm just gonna pour this out on a paper plate and I'm just gonna dab this off and I'm gonna use a sort of stippling on here. And I'm gonna softly stipple in this white over that base color. I don't want it to be solid because it's not solid on the transfer. That's why I painted that base color underneath. And then I actually brought out a sea sponge too that I can use to sort of soften this up and add some irregularity and fade it into that part of the transfer. Anywhere I need to soften it up, and my sea sponge is damp, I just use a little bit of my sea sponge. And then let's come up here on the top and do the same. This is a great way that you can fade any transfer in if you've got a piece that's much smaller than your surrounding area is you can do a little white or any color halo around the edges.
Okay, this piece has some really pretty details in it that I wanna bring out, like these little moldings on the legs right here. And so to be able to do that, I'm gonna use some glaze, but I wanna go ahead and wipe on a clear coat um, so that I can go ahead and glaze this without affecting my paint finish. So I'm gonna take some Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat and a damp blue Gator Hide sponge, and I'm just gonna dip it in there, and I'm gonna wipe on my Satin Clear Coat onto my paint finish. This is going to seal this up, and then anything I do over top, my paint finish will be nice and protected. My transfer, I'm going to go ahead and seal that in as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and throw some glaze on this detail right here to help make it stand out. So I have Dixie Belle Black Glaze, and I like to tint my black glaze with a little bit of coffee bean. Um, and it turns it into this rich brown color, which is a really nice antique brown. So I'm going to go ahead and dig this into all the crevices of this molding. And then I'm also going to go up this fluted detail right here. I just want to get right in the low point on that detail. All right, and then I'm gonna come back with a dry rag and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the excess glaze using my dry rag first. Just get in wherever I can get with my finger and clean this up. Um, my paint is sealed. I did seal my paint before I did this and that way I can wipe away this glaze really easily. And then I'm just going to wipe away the excess from that fluting. And then I'm going to take a baby wipe, which is a wet wipe. And I'm just going to wipe away the glaze and really clean up to get my white nice and crisp. To get um, crevices like this, I just hold my finger at kind of a 45 degree angle. And that way it doesn't clean up the lowest point. It just cleans up either side of it. with my wet wipe on this molded detail down here just clean it all up as much as I can with my baby wipe so that the darkest parts stay only in the lowest crevices and then my white is nice and white I just keep turning my baby wipe to a clean spot so I'm always wiping with a clean spot otherwise I can wipe more of my glaze back onto my surface my glaze is all done. I did add a little bit of gilding wax just to bring out the high points on those moldings as well. I chose to use Dixie Belle Silk and this color is called Harbor on the inside of the drawer boxes. I feel like it pulls out the nice warm blue from the body of the piece. I love finishing the inside of my drawer boxes with Dixie Belle Silk because it's an all-in-one paint. It doesn't require to be sealed. I finished this piece by giving it a coat of Dixie Belle Satin Clear Coat over the whole body. And now I will call this piece done. It's absolutely adorable, you guys. I put my hardware back on. I love how this transfer fits the body of the piece. It looks like a hand-painted piece of furniture. It is unique and one of a kind, and the little bits of red in the flowers is the perfect pop of color for any room. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please click that subscribe button. You can find everything I used for this video and links in the description for this post. You can find more Brushed by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushedbybrandy.com.